Now, we can use the sleuth kit to do a little bit of digging on a disc image that has been created from an EXT3 partition. So let me just bring up our command prompt here. Now, I've got a sample disc image that was created from an EXT3 partition or drive, actually, that included an EXT3 partition. And the EXT3, remember, is really just EXT2 with a journal. So what I want to do is I want to go over to my S drive and CD CFDI 320. And now I've got my EXT sample.dd, which is what I'm going to be using here. So the first thing that I want to do is remember all of our tools are in SleuthKit bin. And I'm going to say MMLS EXT sample. The reason for that is because I need to figure out the starting point for the partition that we are going to be working with. And you can see the starting point for my Linux partition here is 2048. So that's going to be my offset when I run the other tools. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to do sleuthkit again, bin. And then I'm going to do a file listing. And again, I want to say my offset is 2048. That's going to be the partition that I want to get a file listing on. And my ext sample.dd is going to be the file. And you can see here we've got a list of files that are on this particular system. So you can see we've got d slash d, r slash r are the things that we've got at the very beginning of each line. What that indicates is the D indicates it's a directory, the R indicates it's a regular file, and then what we've got after that, the 11, 12, 13, and so forth, is actually the inode where the information, the metadata about this particular file is going to be located. So in order to get information about this particular file, so let's pick the one at inode 12, for example. What I'm going to do is sleuthkit bin, and I'm going to run istat. istat is going to give me statistics on this particular inode. So I'm going to say, again, minus O2048 is my offset, and then I want to run it on this sample here, and then I'm going to say 12. So this is the information about this particular inode. We've got our mode, which is the permission settings for this particular file, the user ID and the group ID, in this case is root, 00, zero date access, date modified, and then we've got a date modified for the inode. So the first two have to do with the file, and then we've got an inode modified as well. You can see we've got a list of direct blocks and then an indirect block. And this suggests that all of these blocks here from 5121 up through 5187 are all of the blocks within our file system here that contain the data from the file. So the direct blocks are where all of the data is located. The indirect blocks is really just a pointer to another inode that is going to have a set of direct blocks associated with it. So you can see if I scroll back up here, we've got a number of files. All of them appear to be consecutive in terms of the inode, and we could do some lookups on these others as well. And you can see we've got some directories here. So I could also go back here with FLS, and I could make sure that I do a recursive search here in order to find all of the files within the directory. So you can see when I do that, minus R, suddenly I get two new files that show up underneath the directories that I have here, Foo and Wubble. Each of them have a file in them. So again, the SleuthKit tools work well regardless of the file system. If you want to figure out the details about the metadata, 
you would run iStat against the inode. In this case, it's the number here in the listing. So we've got 11, 12, 13, and so forth. If you run iStat against the inode, you will get all of the metadata about the file, who owns it, date and time modified, and so forth. 